Hi all. As you know, I'm the head of the International Baccalaureate Careers Programme. This slot is to introduce you to the core section of the IBCP. Whilst you're watching this, please do post any questions that you have and chat. I will then do my best to answer these in our discussion after this presentation. So, all IB programmes have a core programme of study, which is designed to enrich the educational experience of the students who follow it. The IB love an infographic, <laughs> and this one, I think, is particularly useful to demonstrate the role that the core programme plays. It sits at the heart of all the academic strands of your curriculum. It allows you, as a student, to approach your learning from a perspective that is somewhat different to the academic. The IBCP is a holistic course. It looks at personal growth, not just academic growth. Though, of course, these things are not necessarily mutually exclusive. So, what elements are there in the IBCP core? Well, there are four elements. Personal professional skills, the reflective project, service learning, and language development. If we take them in order, I will start with PPS. PPS, the IB also love an acronym and you'll get used to this. It stands for Personal Professional Skills. If you've accessed our Dropbox over the past few weeks, you will have received a bit of a taster of what PPS is all about. Essentially, it is designed to introduce you to the life skills that will help you to operate in a variety of contexts now and in the future. The PPS course will help to develop skills and attitudes that will make you more confident and reflective, and which employers and universities will see as highly desirable. The PPS course focuses on five key areas. Personal development, thinking processes, effective communication, applied ethics and intercultural understanding. And this is an area that is particularly pertinent, I feel, in the current climate. You have lessons in PPS, which are discursive and active. This area is not assessed for your academic input, but for your engagement. Students keep a blog of their reflections, an example of which you can see now on your screen. It is this blog that provides the evidence of your engagement. As part of PPS, you also produce a reflective project, which is part two of the core. This is an academic essay that looks at an ethical dilemma within your professional studies, in this case, your BTEC. This essay allows you to build research skills that will support your application to higher education and in employment. It also allows you to explore an issue that you are genuinely interested in and passionate about. Examples of past projects include, um, for those studying media, for example, is it ethically acceptable for journalists to breach privacy in the name of public interest? This student looked at whether it was okay to hack people's phones to report on criminal activity, and also whether it was okay to photograph celebrities without their consent. Another example is, is no platforming a violation of freedom of speech or an ethically acceptable approach to silencing a dangerous voice? This student looked at whether the media should be allowing views of far-right political groups to be published or, or not. Another one was, is it ethically right to represent women in a sexual way in hip-hop videos and songs? Now, this was a particularly interesting study given the cultural background of the student in which women are still seen as an oppressed faction of society. His views totally changed over the process. For those of you studying performing arts, there are other examples. Is it acceptable for able-bodied actors to play disabled characters? And if you think about it, if a character is written with a disability, Surely an actor with that disability should be playing the role. Another example is, is method acting an ethically acceptable way to execute a performance? This looked particularly at the efficacy of method in opposition to the dangers it might oppose. So things like um, the Heath Ledger case, for example. Another one is, is it ethically acceptable to use child actors in exploring difficult subject matter in the performing arts? Finally, for those of you studying sport, there are other examples. Is it ethically acceptable to use performance-enhancing drugs? Now, with this, I automatically said, no, it's clearly wrong, but this was my ignorance. It appears there are lots of substances that are used in sports to enhance performance, which are perfectly legal. And this student looked at whether it provided a level playing field or not. 
Is it morally okay to fund male sports more than female sports? And this is, it provides endless debate in the classroom. There are people on both sides of this, particularly the footballers, I have to say. Um, and finally, is it ethically acceptable for countries to support tournaments which are held in places with controversial political views? The point is, with all of these examples, the student picked areas which they were personally interested in. And it was this personal interest that allowed them to produce work of a very high standard. The reflective project is the one part of the call that is assessed formally and which gains you UCAS points. Part three of the core is service learning. Service learning is essentially experiential learning. It is designed to give students the opportunity to recognise a need in their community and to provide support for that need. Now, this is the element um, in which students tend to see the most growth. Um, they are brought out of their comfort zones. They don't like it at first, but eventually they work in collaboration with others and they engage in activities which they are, at the end of their time here, quite rightly proud, and, and you guys will be too. The best way to look at service learning and to see, is to see some examples. As with PPS, students record their service learning activities on their blog. And if we look at some examples now, this student undertook several different service learning experiences. Some were one-offs, others were ongoing projects. With her Tackling Period Poverty campaign, Cara, alongside two other students in her year group, identified the global issue of the cost of sanitary products and understood through their research that this was also an issue that affected people in the local and college community. The aim of the project was to reduce the impact of period poverty in the local area and possibly beyond, and they achieved this by creating reusable sanitary towels, which they then distributed to those in need, as well as encouraging others to make their own. Other students take a very different approach to service learning. Currently, some of our performance students are working with our specialist provision school to hold dance and performing arts class, thus enhancing their curriculum. They are giving something back. The point is that it is about giving something to the community. In planning, organizing, delivering and reflecting, you are developing all manner of professional and personal skills. The final part of the core program is language development. As an international school, following an international qualification, we see it as vitally important to look at our place in a global society. The point of language development is twofold, really. Firstly, students are given the opportunity to develop their fluency in any language of their choice. Secondly, through the study of this language, you engage with the culture of its speakers and Specifically, how your chosen profession operates within this culture. So, as an example, you might do what Will here has done and choose to study German, building his knowledge and understanding of the language in direct relation to sport. It is important to note that you do not need to have any background in the language you choose. You can start from scratch. It is not examined, I need to make that clear. There are no tests. You choose a language based on your personal interests and show how your understanding of it has developed over the course on your blog. In all, the purpose of the core is to build those elements of the IB learner profile that are so important in any route you choose to take post sixth form. They are designed to help you take risks, to push yourself to improve, to reflect on your strengths and those areas you want to develop, to balance your academic program with a professional approach. The core allows you to become a well-rounded student. <laughs>